NVIDIA claims that the 5060 Ti is more than 50 times faster than the 1060. And if that sounds like a complete lie, that's because it is. Think about it. If your 1060 can run a game at 30 FPS, that would mean that the 5060 Ti will run it at 1500 frames per second. How? Well, I'm assuming is that they said max settings. So one, they're probably using ray tracing, which the 1060 can't do. Two, they're probably using the 1060 three gigabyte card, which definitely cannot handle modern games. If you think about it in that way, where the 1060 is probably getting two FPS in this scenario on average, well, then it makes a little bit more sense that maybe the 5060 Ti is getting around 100 FPS. Though once you take out DLSS 4X frame gen, it's more like 25. So does it suck? Let's unbox it and find out. This is the PNY 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte OC. Just like the 4060 Ti, there's gonna be two versions, an eight gigabyte version and a 16 gigabyte version. Which one you choose will probably depend on your use case and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but let's just look at the card itself. It's a flow through cooler design and it has some interesting choices in its construction. One, look at the PCB right here. It's like completely blank. They really just extended it long enough so that they could make sure that it had enough room for the full PCIe Express port. And you can see from the traces on the back that this is a 8X card and the rest of this part of the connector is just kind of a formality. On the back we have three display port running at UHBR20 and an HDMI port with 2.1B for speedy connections far beyond the capabilities of this card. Though I guess with frame gen, maybe uh, you'll be able to get those. In terms of aesthetics, I think this card looks fine. It's pretty basic, but that's what you'd expect for these more budget type cards. It does have a metal backplate that uh, will help with conducting some heat. There are thermal pads. It's not just for show. It's a two slot card. It could be even thinner, but they made it two slots thick on the backplate. And if you want to compare it to a 4060 Ti, then we got this one from Asus. It's pretty reasonably sized. It's not too long. It's not too thick. It will fit into pretty much any standard case. And look at where this power connector is. You usually would expect the uh, power connector to be at the end of the card towards the cutouts for like your cable management. But over here is where the power connector is on here, which might actually cause an issue if you have short cables because you have to like go all the way here, all the way around, all the way to the back where your power supply might be under here. It's not like a bad thing. It's just a little weird. You may have noticed on the box that this is a OC version of the card. The good news is that that OC version is coming in at the same price. The bad news is that that OC is also just 4.6%, which isn't crazy from what we've seen from other cards, but just take that into consideration compared to the rest of the 5060 Ti specs that we're showing on screen. The 5060 Ti comes with 4,608 CUDA cores, which is more than the 4060 of last gen, but less than the 3060 Ti two gens prior. However, the 5060 CUDA cores and the 4060 CUDA cores are essentially identical. So the real difference in performance is coming from improvements to ray tracing, uh, AI, as well as just higher clock speeds in general. We also get a bump up to GDDR7. However, on this card, we are still limited to a 128-bit bus width. It is kind of disappointing, but I think that the whole bus width thing is a little bit overblown. And we've yet to see any of these NVIDIA cards be truly bottlenecked by their bus width. You're also gonna get access to NVIDIA's updated video engines that include NVENC and NVDEC, though you'll only get one of each. So if you're doing really heavy video workloads, you might find yourself wanting for a bit more power. And all of this is supposed to be powered by 180 watts, though they do recommend a 600 watt power supply. This OC version doesn't have a higher power requirement. I can't speak for other partner models, but it's still a pretty low power card. Though we don't have a 5060 to test and we don't plan on talking about it too much more in this video, you can infer some idea of its performance by looking at how many CUDA cores it has relative to the TI. And the TI has about 20% more CUDA cores, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a roughly 20% difference in performance on the 5060, maybe even a little bit more, which would be a pretty sizable gap for a TI card. And despite the fact that this is an OC model, it is MSRP, supposedly, at $429. We'll see if you can get that. But how does it perform? To figure it out, I got John from the lab to help me and we're going to be drag racing a 4060 Ti and a B580 against the 5060 Ti. Specifically, 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. So why B580 instead of an AMD card? Well, 
AMD doesn't really have a price competitor that you can actually buy. The 7700 XT has been discontinued and the 9070 is so much more expensive that it doesn't really feel relevant to this card. So the B580 is the only other modern competitor. But if you have old cards, we also did some testing on those and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's get racing. And I only just realized this, but it doesn't use the super melty power connector that's found on the uh, higher end cards. It's just a usual eight pin. There's no RGB on this at all. I like it, stealthy. But you know what isn't stealthy? This segue to our sponsor. Java, in this age of outrageous GPU prices and scalping, it's as good a time as any to buy used. But can you really trust who or where you're buying from? Well, with Jawa, you can. Their verified sellers are personally vetted by the Jawa team to be a reliable source of quality components. They even have fully assembled, ready-to-go builds like this value-oriented gaming beast. And you can offset the cost of your next upgrade by making your own listings on Jawa or even sell your GPUs and CPUs directly to them. So don't wait. Click our link in the description to check out Jawa, the marketplace by PC enthusiasts for PC enthusiasts. Beat the tariffs with the ShipStorm sale event at LTTstore.com. We are offering free shipping on any order worldwide over 150 US dollars. So it's a great time to pick up a commuter backpack, a precision screwdriver, or a stylish framework hoodie. Oh, I took it off to put on this jacket. The point is, we've also got never before seen pricing on our MCM Essentials Bundle. Don't miss it. We'll have it linked down below. First up, Cyberpunk 1080p raster, no ray tracing. Begins in three. Two, one. So what are you expecting, John? Maybe 10%. Faster than the 4060 Ti 16? Yeah. But it's supposed to be 50 times faster. Not than, than the, the 1060? Than the 1060, yes. They didn't say how fast it was compared to the 4060. It's got like a pretty solid lead. We're seeing 90 here. Maybe, maybe 20% And that's faster. like 118. The B580 isn't slouching though. On the 4060 Ti, we got an average of 101.12. On the B580, 96.53, and on the new hotness, 127.53. Yeah, so 20% bump. That's quite respectable, even more than 20%. A good start for the 5060 Ti. Let's see 1440p. Three, two, one. I'm mostly hearing, I think, the CPU cooler. So this is a pretty quiet card, which makes sense because it has uh, a low power draw. It's about the same as the 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte. So still a quite an efficient card. Wow, it's actually doing pretty good. We have 80 on the 5060 Ti and on the 4060 Ti, we got 56.98, but it's being beat by the B580 at 64. Intel actually it scales incredibly well. B580 really comes alive with high resolution. Yeah. Interesting. And no, very notable, like, remember that this is a much, much cheaper card that's competing with, well, the 4060 Ti. It's not quite competing with this, but it's much cheaper. Let's take a look at its RT performance in Returnal. This is at 1080p. Three, two, one, go. 4060 Ti gets 83 average, 79 average on the B580, and our new boy gets 97 average. So again, a pretty decent lead, like a 15 to 20-ish percent lead. That's not bad, especially when you consider that this is $70 cheaper than the last gen card. Except for when you also think about how the last gen card was um, probably the worst value GPU of the past decade, which is saying a lot, because there's been a lot of bad value GPUs in the past 10 years. Let's take a moment to go through the rest of the results that we got from labs. On average, across our test suite at 1080, we see the 5060 Ti pull a 15-ish percent lead over the 4060 Ti 16 gig, but against the 4070 Super, it's 23% behind, which is disappointing when you would consider and usually expect that the next gen car to tear down will beat the last gen car to tear up by a healthy margin. Clearly, that's just not true. On the one hand, compared to last gen, it's impressive that it's getting this much of an uplift with only having 6%-ish more CUDA cores, but it's still just disappointing. In the 1440 raster, we see pretty similar margins with the 5060 Ti getting about 17% uplift over the 4060 Ti, 16 gigabyte. I hate how I have to specify it. And the RTX 4070 Super pulls away with a slightly larger lead. The B580 is supposed to be barely half the price of this 5060 Ti. To be getting just 20% less performance while saving that much money is pretty compelling. Sure, the B580 has driver problems, but the 5000 series has been having its own share of driver problems. Not as bad, but it's worth considering. Though, I guess, what are your other options? It's not like AMD has an option yet. 
Let's talk about RT though. Ray Tracing 1080, the 5060 Ti, it's worse. The 4060 Ti 16GB closes the gap to a closer to 15%, while the 5060 Ti trails even further behind the 4070 Super in ray tracing. For 1440 RT, we kind of felt that that was outside of the parameters of what this card is designed for, but we wanted to check it out anyways. And in Cyberpunk, well, it gets, you won't believe this, roughly 30% behind the 4070 Super and roughly 15% in front of the 4060 Ti 16GB. For thermals, the PNY 5060 Ti 16GB performs adequately with a, a roughly 69 average degrees Celsius temperatures. And in F1, we see a max temp of 68 and a average of 65. In terms of power draw, we're seeing a similar trend to other Blackwell GPUs where Yes, they perform around their average rated power rating, but they do like to pull a little bit extra, with the most we ever saw it pulling across our tests being around 213 watts, substantially higher than the 180 watt TGP. Wow. NVIDIA, you've done it again. You've released another dud. And you did it all in style while completely lying and misrepresenting your performance. Sure, DLSS4, it's good, especially the upscaler. Frame gen is neat and works nicely in specific scenarios, but comes with its own downsides. So what is NVIDIA really offering us here that we don't already have? 50 bucks in savings. And that's it on a card that already sucks in value. We haven't tested the 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte version, so we don't know if the 16 gigabyte version gets you that much more performance. And we also don't know what the 5060 is gonna look like. So considering that those have their own price gaps, who knows if the 5060 Ti 16 gig is gonna be good. The GPU market right now is rough. And all we can do is wait and see. Maybe in a few months, prices will settle and we can be happy that there's at least some cards that are available on the lower price ranges because it's been a desert for the past several months. So that's something to be thankful for. And I'm thankful for you for watching this short circuit. If you like this format, why don't you check out our 5080 roundup where we looked at three different 5080s. Yeah, they're expensive, but if you're gonna spend that much money, you might as well know which one to get.